Good day everybody. Today's weekly healthy tips topic is osteoporosis. Osteoporosis literally means porous bone. It's a disease in which the density and the quality of the bone are reduced. As bone become more fragile and porous, the risk of fracture is greatly increased. The loss of bone occurs silently and progressively that, and that, that is asymptomatic. Often there are no symptoms until the first fracture occurs. Around the world, one in every three women and one in every five women are at the risk of getting osteoporosis fracture. In fact, in every three seconds, osteoporosis fracture occurs. And the most common fracture associated with osteoporosis occurs at the hip, spine, and wrist. What contributes to bone loss? The simple truth is that if we live in a balanced lifestyle, we actually need very little calcium of the right sort to maintain healthy bones. The problem we have is not that we get too little calcium, but rather that we have made choices that dramatically accelerate rate of bone loss to the point that we can never consume enough calcium to overcome the deficit. What accelerates bone loss to such a degree? And what can be done about it? Number one, lack of sufficient weight-bearing exercise accelerate bone loss. So increased exercise helps reverse it. Number two, insufficient boron and vitamin D3 contribute to bone loss. Vitamin D3 is a hormone, not input much. We need 30 minutes of early or morning, early morning or late afternoon sun during summer to collect enough vitamin D3. D vitamin D3 put the calcium into the bones with potassium, zinc, and other minerals. Number three, insufficient magnesium in the diet. Insufficient magnesium in the diet is more of a factor than insufficient calcium. One study showed that after nine months, women on magnesium supplement increase bone density by 11%. Personally, I recommend you to get your potassium, magnesium, and calcium from vegetables and fruits, not pills. Most calcium or mineral supplement are dug out of art and will give you stones in your organs. Like calcium carbonate is just crushed seashells or egg shells. Hello to kidney and gallstones. Increasing the amount of gamma linoleic acid, GLA, and EPA in the diet helps increase bone density. Number four, balancing out hormones. I'm not advising you to undergo hormone replacement therapy. Hormone replacement therapy, HRT, as, it, as its practice, increase your risk of cancer and offers only a temporary reprieve from osteoporosis. What most people don't realize is that bone loss accelerate rapidly in women once they stop using estrogen, causing a catch-up effect. By the age of 80, women who had taken HRT, hormone replacement therapy, for 10 years and then stopped for 10 years will lose 27% of their initial bone density, while those who, who were never treated will lose about 30%. The only way you get continued benefit is to take hormone replacement therapy for the rest of your life, which will likely be shorter because of the increased risk in developing breast and endometrial cancers. HRT, hormone replacement therapy, doesn't build bones. It only slows the rate of loss for a short period of time and a great risk. Good natural option for 
hormone replacement therapy is natural progesterone cream. Increase, it increases bone strength and density by stimulating osteoblast, your bone building cells, and does not carry the same risk as the hormone replacement therapy. All what I stated earlier paid in comparison to the problem of high acid diet. That is, the next factor is high acid diet. This is the reason the incidence of osteoporosis has soared and why more men are now suffering. A high acid diet such as meat, fish, poultry, a dairy cook, grains and pine sugars leaches calcium from your body by forcing it to use calcium from your bones to buffer the high acid content so that your blood pH remains constant at 7.35 to 7.55 so that you don't die. Our blood is slightly alkaline 7.35 to 7.45 and a shift to 7.25 is out of balance and the body will pull calcium out of the bones to buffer and restore its natural homeostasis. So the excess calcium pulled out of the bones which buffers the blood will collect in hollow organs, kidney, gallbladder, liver. The calcium even ends off in the joint. Next one is dairy. The problem with dairy is that because it contains high phosphorus content, it actually takes more calcium to buffer it than you actually receive from the dairy. Thus, the high incidence of osteoporosis in countries that consume a lot of dairy, I'm not saying that dairy is the biggest culprit, no. Most of other foods such as uh, worse, but such as sugar and phosphoric acid. Lemons are acidic, pH 3.0, but taking an empty stomach in water turns into alkaline solutions once the pass, when it passes the stomach. Know you are, you are about acid pumping foods and alkaline pumping food. You should know them. I just single out dairy because it is always identified as a building strong bones. When of one of it is true, calcium from vegetables much much more better and is loaded with potassium. We need four thousand five hundred mg a day of potassium. A skim milk is slightly alkaline and not too bad to drink compared to a hundred different acidic cook and processed food we eat daily. Get your protein from a wide variety of from a wide variety of nuts, beans, pulses, seeds, and vegetables, proteins, etc. Fruits like banana. If you eat 12 banana to contain 4,500 mg, but I'm not saying to eat 12 banana each day. Get your potassium from a lot of different vegetables, fruits, and salads. Eggs are acid but do have our 24, 22 amino acids and 8 essential ones. So since organic eggs can help you keep your 8 essential amino acids off and stop your DNA from collapsing from inside, DNA molecules, DNA molecules are 